So hello everybody, it is almost Friday, so it's time for another DAX Fridays, a new DAX function every Thursday. And in today's DAX Fridays, we're actually going to talk about unwritten DAX rules. Here's the thing, have you ever wondered how is it possible that people look at your model or at your DAX measures and say, oh, you must be a beginner, like, oh, because you're a beginner, this is a normal thing to do. How, how do you know? And it's because of these unwritten DAX rules that I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to lay out the most common ones here for you so you can fake it until you make it. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with the actual creation of DAX formulas and then we zoom out to the model. So if we start with the DAX you know, the creation of a DAX formula, one of the easiest way to know the level of a person is to look at how it was written. A calculated column, one of the unwritten rules is that a calculated column uses, you write the table name and then the column name, and for a measure you just write the column name. And the reason for that is so you can easily dif differentiate them because they behave so differently. So you want to actually see what type of, if you're using a measure or if you're using a calculated column, and uh, if you are new to DAX, you will not know that. So that's one of the ways you can actually give out your level of expertise with DAX. The other one, which is also very common, is how many calculated columns you have against how many measures and what you have calculated, created your calculated column for. And here is a difficult one because you will need to have a little bit of expertise in order to transform your calculated columns to measures, depending on what you're trying to do, obviously. But it is very common, actually, to see a lot of calculated columns. And one of the unwritten rules of DAX is always create a measure first. And if you can't, create a calculated column. And most of the things can actually be done as measures, but it is tougher than doing as calculated columns, especially if you come from the Excel world. So. A model that has a lot of calculated columns probably comes from somebody that got started with DAX. Now, here's another one. Using implicit measures everywhere. And what does implicit measure mean? Here's the thing. When you have a column that is, has a numerical value, you are actually able to drop that into your visualization directly or, or into your uh, measure and it will work but it will create a lot of trouble for you later on if your model change, which will probably change at a point. So the rule, the unwritten rule is create explicit measures, it's called. So for example, if you have a column that is called sales, create a total sales measure and use that in your calculations instead of the column directly. Now, here's two more when it comes to creation of DAX formulas. If you open a DAX measure or a calculated column and you see that everything has been written on one line, look at my old videos, you probably assume that one, either it was copied from one of the forums and pasted in, or that person is a DAX beginner, okay? So normally, or the unwritten rule is that you should format your DAX measures. And format it means that you, you indent your steps in the DAX measure. So you will, there, there is actually tools, there is like a DAX formatter that you can put paste the measure and it will format it for you. To me, it opens the formula too much. It expands it too much. I, I prefer to shift enter and indent myself. So I can group it in the parts of the formula or the parts of DAX, depending on what I'm doing. But a formula that has not been formatted is probably been written by a beginner. And there's another one and it is the comments. It is an unwritten rule to always comment your tax measures. When you get started, you're just, you know, plowing through, making sure that your calculations are correct, trying to actually get your calculations done. And I understand that commenting might not be a priority, but the thing is that down the line, 
a week, a month, a year later, when you open that model and you want to try to change your measure, it's going to be a lot harder if you haven't commented. So this is something that you will probably learn the high, hard way, but if you can start now, comment your measures. Okay, so when it comes, if we zoom out to the model, one of the things that to me gives away that has been created by a beginner, not always though, so you have the IT pro versus beginner in here. So if you open the model and it has like 120 tables, always for me is a red flag. It's like, what's going on here? So it's either two things, either you have like the entire company model in one place, which might not be a good practice, but it is possible, or you just put everything in there and not sure about how to create a star schema because the unwritten rule is that you should create as close as possible as a star schema for many reasons. Performance reasons is going to be easier to do your calculations. Yeah, tons and tons of reasons. So to have it a huge model is not always a good practice or a best practice. Another thing that will give you up as a beginner is I've seen it many, many times that you open the model and then you see a lot of tables, force warning, but then when you look at the tables, you see sales 2019 is one table, sales 2020 is another table, sales 2021 is another table. When all of that should be one big sales table. So people take data, different tables for different years, that kind of thing will also give you up as a beginner, at least in modeling. And it's going to make your DAX insanely difficult, I swear. So the unwritten rule is actually unpivot your tables and make sure that you find your optimal star schema model. So if you have sales 2020, 21, 19, put everything in one sales table, okay? Now, one more about modeling, also very, very common, and is that you see bidirectional relationships everywhere, followed by my DAS calculations, do not produce the correct results. And most likely is because of your modeling, not because of your DAX skills. So try, the unwritten rule is avoid bidirectional relationships unless you know what you're doing. And trust me, there are very few people that know what they are doing with bidirectional relationships. The PT is that is allowed in Power BI and is created by default. There should be like a an, an extra, are you a super duper BI developer? Turn this on, otherwise leave it off. And now, last but not least, and this is probably, this is not telling you that you are a DAX beginner, but this tells me that you are, you have an IT background. And it's when I get a model and I see IT descriptions on the tables, on the columns, on the measure names, on the, you know, like you have a measure table. I hate <laughs> measure tables, they drive me nuts. Or you have like TBL underscore sales, or you have fact, fact, you know, the, the, those people that have been working with the BI before, that was the convention. You have fact tables and you have dimension tables. So you, you have that as a suffix or your tables name and it's still there. So the way that you actually create your models will give you away your background a little bit. It's quite fascinating actually. So, oh, by the way, the unwritten rule is obviously to have business names everywhere, okay? Business name, please. Anyhow, I hope that these unwritten rules actually help you level up your DAX game, number one. Number two, don't give away your level of expertise that far. And yeah improve your DAX skills basically. So I will see you again on Thursday, on Tuesday, I've been getting used to my new schedule too. I will see you again on Tuesday with another Power BI video. So until then, take care, bye bye.